Hey Luke here at CatsandCarp.com and I'm going to show you how to catch snakeheads. I'm also going to show you how to clean them and cook them. I've got a great little recipe waiting for you. But uh, first, I have to go out and catch some snakeheads. So me and my friend Dave, we got up early, got the kayaks out, and uh, went out targeting some snakeheads. Now, if you want to catch snakeheads, use the exact same gear you would for largemouth bass, but just a little bit smaller. So I got this bass frog, this little pocket frog. Works great. I've got it in the smallest size because snakeheads and mouths are on average smaller than largemouth bass. You'll miss a lot of strikes because the snakehead doesn't quite get the lure completely in its mouth. So a smaller lure will increase your hookup ratio. Snakeheads love thick, thick weeds and shallow water, so a topwater lure works great. Plus, there's the added bonus that you get to see these snakes slither out of the grass and just explode on your lure. Oh, I see it. I see it. He's coming for it. See it? I see it. Yeah. I can see him. That was, that was so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, he's dragging me. First snake that, baby. Oh, I can see him just slithering after it. Well, if he won't come to me, I'll come to you. <laughs> I got, I got, I brought a net too. I, oh my goodness! I'm gonna, I should have brought a shovel. I told you this is a Come to daddy. Yeah. I told you this is a spot. You sure did. <laughs> oh, he's fat. The northern snakehead is not native to Virginia. Yeah. It was introduced in around 2004, and uh, the population has just exploded, and now you can catch them quite regularly. Fishermen are strongly encouraged to keep the snakehead they catch, and they're extremely tasty, so that's not exactly a big chore. When you catch them, you have to kill them immediately. If you get caught transporting live snakeheads, you can get in big trouble. So the, the easiest way to kill a snakehead once you've caught it is just to rip its gills out. It's a lot easier than trying to bash its head in, in the bottom of a kayak. And it doesn't take much. You just grab a hold of the gills, give it a good rip on either side, and uh, in a few minutes it'll, it'll bleed out. Plus it improves the quality of the meat when you bleed the fish rather than bash its head in. Probably the best way to fish for snakeheads is from a kayak. It's just a lot more manageable, it's stealthy, and you can get into places that snakeheads love that other boats can't fit. Shallow water with tons of weeds is prime snakehead area. The only thing I don't like about kayaks is the seats can kill your back, especially if you don't have a high-end uh, kayak seat. But in the shallow water, you can just slip out and uh, stand up every once in a while and then it a uh, nice little break. I'm standing in the water with Fishzilla. All right, Dave. Yeah, you better, you better watch it. If the snakeheads start eating my junk, just shoot me, okay? Just Your job is to put me down. Yeah. <laughs> Tell my wife I died like a hero. <laughs> Way the, the bath. Okay, I just felt something moving on me. Oh, we're done. <clears throat> The places we find the most snakeheads are typically about two to four feet deep with only a few inches of clear water above the weeds. Oftentimes the weeds come right up to the surface and you're skipping your frog right through the weeds. The snakeheads just slither through this slime and this weeds like nothing. The snakeheads will hide just under the top of the weeds or in the weeds or just under the surface of the water and wait to ambush food. <laughs> One of the best ways to fish for these snakeheads is to paddle along standing up in your canoe and spot them just inches under the surface and then sight cast to them. It's a good way to give your back a break and to target snakeheads instead of just blindly casting to water. When you're casting with a really light lure like this little frog, it's hard to load your rod up properly. By loading your rod, I mean getting it to bend while you're casting. That's what gives you the distance and the speed, is the rod loads up and the spring and it shoots your lure out there, okay? So if you want to load up your rod more, you can either cast faster, or another trick is to let the, rod, the lure hit the water before you cast. 
and that force of pulling the lure out of the water bends the rod a little bit more, loads it up just a little bit better, give you about three to five more yards. So if you're ever trying to just get a little bit further out there before you cast, let your, uh, let your lure sink into the water. So, just like this. There you go. Load it up. Snakeheads definitely seem to be more active near sunset and sunrise. So after getting here nice and early and having some initial action, the heat of the day came on and things just kind of shut down. So I called it. I had enough snakeheads to, to make a really nice meal. And uh, so on to phase two. So let me show you how we clean these suckers. You pretty much just flay them and it's not too different than any other fish. Go and cut in behind the, uh, the pectoral fin and slice along the belly. Um, their rib cage is, is kind of tough like a catfish. Um, but not quite as tough as a catfish. So on a fish about this size or smaller, you can cut through the ribs. And a fish any bit bigger than this, and it gets really hard to get through those ribs, and it's really hard on your knife, so it's better to flay over the tops of the ribs. So right about this size is the cutoff for when you want to cut through the ribs versus flaying over the top of the ribs. Um, but they flay up pretty nice, being nice and long and skinny, it makes it uh, pretty easy to do, even with my super crappy $3 uh, uh, flay knife. Uh, they got it at a discount bin in Walmart. Um, any rate, this, uh, this fillet here, or once you do it, you want to get the skin off. The skin is really, really tough, so just kind of work in there and get on kind of the edge of a cutting board or edge of a, a dock or whatever. and and put your knife in between the meat and the skin and just start working it back and forth and, and this uh, really beautiful but tough skin comes right off. Beautiful white meat and then you just have some uh, rib bones and then just go in and cut those off and uh, you're, you're doing pretty good. And, uh, just beautiful white meat, firm though. It's, it's uh, uh, definitely firmer meat than catfish uh, but absolutely gorgeous. Now I noticed that I left a lot of meat on the top of the head, kind of back here. So you go back in and, and get a couple uh, couple good chunks out of that. Um, so first thing, I'm gonna show you how to cook these things. And we're gonna start with the sauce. Get some of this uh, naked mango juice, just this uh, mango puree, and start reducing it. That just means boil it uh, on a gentle temperature for a couple hours till the water evaporates out of it and gets into a thick sauce. Then add some cayenne pepper um, you know, if you're a spicy person, go to town. We're, we're not real spicy people, so just a, just a pinch for flavoring. And then uh, a healthy a, uh, spoonful of cumin. And then three bay leaves. Um, you can add more if you really want. And you can see I'm not doing super precise here. I'm just kind of doing it to taste. And then uh, a little bit of cloves. A little cloves goes a long way, so go gentle on the cloves. Um, but you know, a couple good dashes of cloves really uh, is a nice spice for this. And uh, mix it all up and taste it. If it's too zippy, if it's too z uh, zesty, add a little whipping cream and that'll kind of cool the spices down. So if you end up overdoing the cumin or something, you can back off by uh, adding and some uh, whipping cream. Now there's these Y bones in the middle of the fillet that only go about one third the length of the fillet. It's, it's uh, kind of weird. So. I go and I slit down the middle right on that natural seam that you can see and there's there you can see the ribs just are these Y bones just get in there and cut them off and so just split the fillet down a long ways and you can cut those uh, those bones out um, and then just check the fillet and make sure you haven't left a rib or, or uh, some other little hard bit in there and then just start cutting chunks right about that about half inch thick uh, chunks of meat and you try to want to keep them consistently uh, the same thickness pretty consistent in the thickness and this one fish makes this uh, big pile of, of meat quite a lot of meat for one fish and then uh, soak all the chunks in buttermilk for at least five minutes but you can go like you know 20 or 30 and uh, while they're soaking in the buttermilk get the oil going I use uh, peanut oil and you put it in a nice pot and about that, about an inch, inch and a half of oil is what you need. And then I took tapioca flour. You can use normal flour. The tapioca flour is a little bit different texture and a little sweeter. And I get some uh, coconut shavings, some sweetened coconut shavings, and do about one to one flour to coconut shavings and mix it all up. 
and uh, then you go in and add some eggs. And uh, these eggs had a little surprise. They had oh, there's two double eggs. yolks. Mm. Oh, nice. But anyway, uh, add a, a bunch of eggs in there. I think I, I had about six or seven eggs. And uh, you mix it up until you get a nice runny batter. You want it to be thick, but you want it to be able to see when it kind of runs and spreads out on its own. That's the right thickness. The thickness is really important. In another uh, container, put some normal baking flour or bread flour. So you've got the buttermilk, the bread flour, and then the batter. And you get a little station going, and, and you pull it out. You roll it in the flour. Then you roll it in the, the batter. And uh, you want it to be nice and coated with that coconut and batter all over. And you dunk it in the oil. You want it to be on a low heat. You want it to sizzle aggressively, but be done and brown in about uh, four or five minutes. Um, they cook pretty quick, so you can do a hotter temperature if you like. They come out just absolutely deliciously golden brown with this sweet coconut batter all over them. Then you just drizzle the nuggets in the mango reduction and go to town. Great. Oh, yeah. So, so what do you think, Becca? You like it? It's really good. Yeah, oh, good. It's gone. I ate it all. It's really good. Oh, well, excellent, excellent. It's good. So, what what'd you think? You like it? I think it was really, really good. It was, it was great. Oh. So, Dave, what do you think of the snakehead? Amazing. How's it taste? Check it out. Hold it still. Yeah, that's good looking. And it doesn't have that fishy taste at all. It's very good. And that's why restaurants in Maryland, they're paying, they're actually paying a lot of money for these and serving them. Good All job, Luke. Right. Hey, thanks. <laughs> well, if you like this video, check out some of our other great videos, including how to catch catfish with bluegill and my awesome catfish po'boy recipe. If you want to make a kick butt po'boy, this is the recipe for you. If you like these videos and you want to get new videos every week, don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching.